Hello, I'm Mary Smith and this is Pitt Resource Connection and during this section we're going to be talking to Kelly Baxter who is the community educator with the Teddy Bear Children's Advocacy Center. How are you doing Hi, Kelly? Great, thanks. How long has um, Teddy Bear been in our community? Teddy Bear has been here 20 years serving children and families that are dealing with abuse allegations. Um, we are part of the Brody School of Medicine at ECU and that's how we came about. Okay, and so ex and when you, we speak of abuse, what is it that you're, you're, is it just any kind of abuse or? We provide comprehensive services to children through age 18 who have a current allegation of either physical or sexual abuse. We handle both cases actually in our clinic. Okay, so can you explain to me what the process would be? What we do is we provide a service to children and their non-offending caregivers, so if a parent is not involved in the abuse allegation, and we provide um, forensic interviewing, medical exams, we have a medical director and medical staff on site who provide that service, um, we provide therapy on site and work with law enforcement and social services to make the experience of disclosing an incident of abuse and working through the system as least impactful as it can be on the child. We are very child focused. We have child life uh, workers who will walk the child through the process from the moment they mm -hmm. walk in the door until they walk out of the door after their appointment. And so that is how we are based and that's what an advocacy center will do. And then you have an abuse situation. I think what makes the teddy bear so unique is that w the old days, you'd have to go over and over your story a thousand times. Each person to interview, you'd have to start from square one and go through. And, exactly. and don't you go with a kind of a multidisciplinary team approach with this? That's exactly what we do. And so we bring everyone in at the same time when we bring the child and family in. We have if social services involved, mm -hmm. their social worker will be there. If law enforcement is involved, the law enforcement agency will be there. We have when our forensic interviewers are speaking with the children, it is being recorded. Um, on DVD so that the law enforcement leaves with that in their possession to take back to the district attorney or, or wherever the case needs to go so that the child doesn't have to repeat. We also have um, a closed circuit television so that law enforcement and social services are watching that interview so that if they have something else they need to ask about then they can speak with the interviewer at the end and say can you ask about this or can you get some clarity on what they said here so that the child is not having to repeat the story over and over mm -hmm. again or going to the hospital to repeat this part and then back to the police station to tell this. It's trying mm -hmm. to make it as seamless, as close to one time as you can yeah. get. Yeah, well that makes a big difference though when you're a child it particularly um, to have to repeat it. And normally when you repeat stories, some things change um, exactly. just because of the nature of what you may remember now and versus and sometimes that's a good thing but right. it's very traumatic after an abuse situation to exactly. have to talk about it. <clears throat> How do they find you? All of our cases come through <clears throat> referral from law enforcement or social services so it has to be one of those two routes. We don't do referrals from the public or the school system. It has to come through DSS or law enforcement and we cover, Teddy Bear covers 29 counties in eastern mm. North Carolina and so there are 20 children's advocacy centers in North Carolina. A large portion of them are actually in the western part of the state um, and so we cover basically from Rocky Mount Wilson, sort of that I-95 line mm -hmm, mm -hmm. east. And so we work with a variety of social services departments and also law enforcement. So do they all come to Greenville when they have to do this interview? They do. Mm -hmm. They come to our facility for the interview and then we also provide on-site therapy for the children um, for after the fact mm -hmm. and after everything has, has gone through the initial process. For those children who come in from out of town, we have a list of providers in their home community so that they don't have to come back to Teddy Bear right. for therapy and even people here in Pitt County don't have to come to, to Teddy Bear for therapy. We have a list of therapists in the community who are equipped to handle the, the type of therapeutic interventions that these children will need. So even though a, a family um, can't self-refer mm -hmm. to your organization, but if they're looking for therapists in the area that will handle abuse, you know, maybe from a prior mm -hmm. time, is that something that you can give them? We can certainly always provide that information and if people have questions we encourage them, you know, to call us um, and we're happy to work them 
through the process. Um, we are out in the community mm -hmm. quite a bit um, promoting our services and just letting people know that we're here. Um, and so we have that type of information and we can certainly get that for people if they need it. How many children do you serve like a year? We see about 600 kids a year. Gosh, that's and terrible. And that's a lot of children. That's terrible, It really too. is. And it, it is. And we <coughs> see them from I mean, it's birth good to, 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 to mm -hmm. age 18. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we see the spectrum in there. We see, you know, little babies all, all the way up to, to 17, 18-year-old children. Um, and so it's a, it's a lot of children and families that come through this this clinic and thankfully it's here so that they have that resource. Exactly. I was going to say it must be very rewarding to work there but very difficult at the same it time. It is. It is. You see a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> and that's the sad part. Yes. You know, my dad used to joke about the friend of his owned a funeral home mm -hmm. and he'd always wonder, you know, should I ask you how business is because it's not always good to be <laughs> exactly. good. That's yeah. right. <clears throat> How do you go about making um, the community aware of Teddy Bear? We participate in a lot of community events. Um, in the Pitt County area, we've got Kids Fest coming up where we'll go and set up booths mm -hmm. where there may be parents, the maternity fair, where we have general information about Teddy Bear and abuse and neglect issues, that type of thing. Um, we have our multidisciplinary teams in our outlying counties. We've mm -hmm. got several counties that will have groups that get together to go over cases. So you'll have law enforcement, the DA's office, social services, the school systems involved in these teams. We work with those out in their local communities. Um, April is child abuse right. prevention month and so we've got events coming up, Pinwheel Gardens um, that we'll have out in the communities and so we try and make sure that we're out there so that we can help spread um, the message about what services we provide but also the prevention message. Okay and does um you have some trainings that you do, don't you? We do. Um, mm -hmm. One of the big things, one of the big components of my job is to provide our prevention aspects. And the main thing that we do is the Stewards of Children, which is a child sexual abuse prevention training from Darkness to Light. And Darkness to Light is a national organization that's based in Charleston, South Carolina, mm -hmm. that deals specifically specifically with child sexual abuse. Um, and that's what the Stewards of Children training is. It's a two and a half hour training that works on um, preparing yourself um, by learning the facts about child sexual abuse. You know, it's not a topic that people want to talk about or no. think about the recent Penn State incident mm -hmm. has really brought this topic to the forefront, um, which if there's anything positive that can come out of a horrible <laughs> incident like that, it's that we are, we are talking mm -hmm. about it now. And so Stewards of Children is a two and a half hour training um, that is provided by me, it is provided by a facilitator, and we talk about um, understanding the problem, minimizing the risk in our community by child protection policies and organizations that serve youth, um, understanding how to talk with children and adults about child sexual abuse, what to do if a child discloses to you, signs and symptoms that you may see. Um, and then we talk about what the roles and responsibilities of an adult are and what the, the laws in North Carolina state about reporting mm -hmm. uh, any abuse and, and work through the, the steps of being prepared and making your community a safer place. And so we offer that training free of charge to the public. We're able to do that right now um, through the Vidant Foundation mm -hmm. and also through the Children's Trust Fund. They have provided funding for me to go out and provide that to the community. I'm able to go into all of our counties right now that we serve. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've done a, a great job of reaching some people and we're really trying to push now to really get out in the communities. It's geared for the general public. It's it's not a, you know, a professional specific training. So we have lots of students who take it. I've done um, trainings for the, the guidance counselors at Pitt County Schools. And so there, there are lots of groups that we can provide that for. And I think you came to and did our staff. We certainly the, did. Yeah. We certainly did <clears throat> um, and had a great turnout. And so that's mm -hmm. the, the types of groups that we're trying to get. We do church groups and child care facilities. Anybody who interacts with children, um, be it in a, in a setting like T-ball or scouts, mm -hmm. or if you have children 
Um, if you are just, you know, if you work in the church nursery, if any of those folks can benefit from this training and everybody, you know, you hear two and a half hour training and everybody's like, ooh, two and a half hours. Yeah. And then they walk out that door and go, wow, it didn't seem like it that. was two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's a lot of really good information and it's a, it is a topic that's very difficult to talk about. Um, but you know, when you see something that you feel like there's something really wrong with this child and they're not right. acting right, it's good to be armed with that kind of information to help help you know what to do about it. Because exactly. the first thing they say is like, well, if I report it and there's nothing wrong, what's going to happen? Right. And in that case, when you're proven wrong, the parents will feel, feel very vindicated. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, you know, as adults, it's our job to protect children. And, and the statistics are astounding. It's 90 percent of them will be by someone that the family knows and trusts, which is a statistic that startles people. Everybody expects that you should worry about the stranger in the park, and that's not the case. Right. And so if we can get that information out there and make people comfortable talking about it and make our community a place where we put policies in place so that children are not in one-on-one -on -one situations with adults and there are policies and procedures in place in our community then it makes it a very child-friendly community and mm -hmm. a very perpetrator unfriendly <laughs> community <laughs> and that's, so that's like. our goal that's right does, does the social media does, do you talk about that in this training and how to deal with the social media with, with children? we do we do a little bit all of this training is geared toward adults specifically but mm -hmm. one of the statistics that they use is that one in five children will be approached while on the internet and that was a statistic from a 2001 juvenile justice study and you know my feeling is that in 2012 our children are much more Savvy. involved yes. with the internet yeah. than they were in 2001 so it would not surprise me to find the next time that that study is done that that number has gone up mm -hmm. um, and so we do talk a little bit about making sure that you know, parents are aware of what they need to do to keep their children safe and to have, you know, monitor their internet usage, make sure that computers are not in children's bedrooms. And mm -hmm. we've had incidents right here in Pitt County in the past six months with, you know, people, kids meeting people online and it having really negative consequences. And it's, it's amazing what's out there and people really um, are, are not aware and a lot of it is because we don't want to, we just don't want to think that that people are out there that will do harm to our children. You're being preyed upon all right. the time, really, huh? It's kind of <laughs> exactly. <a> scary. Thought. <laughs> exactly. We yeah. don't want to turn everybody, you know, completely paranoid. Yeah. But but awareness is is key. That's exactly right, and, and particularly when we're talking about our children, because right. they're so innocent, they don't understand. They think they know everything, but they exactly. they don't know the big picture, and that's where our role comes in to that's help. That's exactly right. Well, Kelly, I thank you for coming in and talking well, about this because it's important that people know. Um, how do they know about the trainings when they come about? We provide information when we do public trainings. It's advertised in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, we advertise it on our website and, the, um, and we do flyers. We can also host trainings for anybody who would like to have them. I need about 10 people and a blank wall to mm -hmm. show my videos. So if there are church groups, um, youth organizations, fraternities, sororities, anybody that would like to do this training or provide a space for it, I am happy to come. They're more than welcome to call me and we will we will try and set something up. Um, but I can come and bring it to any group. And like I say, it's free of charge. My only requirement is it is, it is for adults. So it's over 18. We don't do this particular training mm -hmm. for yeah. high school age kids. But uh, you know, I'm also available to do some other trainings as well if you have younger groups that you would like to, if you've got junior counselors right. and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff that will be working, then we can provide some, some trainings for them as well. Okay, so you have some that are already pre-scheduled, you have dates for in advance that yes. you post, and then if people are interested in having this training conducted in their place, and mm -hmm. you say 10 people, I mean, at least that many? At I mean, least if there was 100, yeah, you could still at do At least it? 10, mm -hmm. um, and then we can accommodate what the space will accommodate, and okay. we can work around if we've got large groups, then, then that's fine, and we will certainly work around that. Okay. Um, it is a discussion-based training, and so that's why the minimum of 10 really mm -hmm. allows for some discussion. Right. Um, so that's sort of what we aim to have as our minimum number. Um, but really, you know, groups of, of 25 to 30 are a, a perfect size. True. So.
We can do it All right. if anybody is interested. So you need to call Kelly. <laughs> That's right. Please <laughs> Get do. Get her on your schedule. Um, I've, you know, it is a great training. Uh, you do learn a lot. Even though you may think you already know a bunch about mm -hmm. this, uh, it's still enlightening and it has a lot of really good um, information. And the discussion mm -hmm. aspect is very good because right. that's going to change from group to group of what right. the discussion is. And so right. we appreciate you coming in and telling well, us all about it. Me. And thank you for it. what you all are doing at Teddy Bear. Thank you. Okay. And thank you guys for watching the Pit Resource Connection.